Uh-oh. Are you still here, Maria? I'm here. Yeah. I went to go get a, a copy of the agenda. Oh. <laughs> Did you all get my um the presentation? Yes, I think so. Let me just go back to um thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening, um, Francina, Tiago, Kayla, Hello. Veronica, Kate, everyone that's joined us, O'Dawn, good evening, everyone. Um, oh, hi, Dr. Johnson. <laughs> hi. It is great to see you. I mean, it's great to see everyone. I was just yeah. <laughs> excited to see Dr. Johnson, too. Hi, Lydia. Wow, we're getting, look, this is great. Um, Lori, Sarah, this is wonderful. Shanika, I'm going to decrease and you can, whenever you're ready, you can just take over. We can. Can you hear me, Shanika? Oh, we can't hear you. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Shanika, we can't hear you. Uh, I think she went back out, went, went out to come back. So I'm trying to see. Hi, Connor, Alisa. So just give us a few minutes and then okay. we'll here you are. Thank you. Okay. Yes, I had to uh, sign off and sign back in. Please, apologies. Okay, let's get this party started. Good evening, everyone. Deidre, I'm so sorry if I interrupted you. Uh, I saw you were speaking, but I couldn't hear anything. No, 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 no. You did not. Well, I was waiting for you. Thank you. Oh. 
All right, then it's 6.34 p.m. Let's uh, bring this meeting to attention. Thank you everyone for attending the January 9th, 2024 Community Board 9 Youth Education Libraries Committee meeting. I am co-chair, my name is Shanika Wilson, along with my illustrious co-chair, Deirdre McIntosh Brown. And we have a little bit of a packed agenda this evening. So I pretty much have emailed everyone and asked everyone to uh, please keep that in mind. We don't have, oh, we might have quorum. All right, so first on our agenda, oh, fabulous. And I see Monique is joining us. That's wonderful. First on our agenda was the City of Yes proposal. I did include it with even um, our presenters so that if you wanted to weigh in, you could. Um, and just a kind of a brief overview, the New York City Department of City Planning is planning to remove, change and adjust certain restrictions around where you may conduct business. Uh, and what that may mean is that uh, maybe someone can open up an eatery in their basement apartment, hypothetically, and I don't think that's on there, but just so you get a gist of what's happening, there are some strange changes like that. And so this can affect all of us where we live. And especially for the youth education community, we wanna think about uh, maybe people having more leeway. You can already open a daycare in your apartment now. There are some regulations to that. There's going to be less regulations. And so that's something to consider as we discuss the safety for children. And so I just wanted to open it up to the floor if anyone had gotten time to review that document. And I see Lydia has her hand up. Uh, Lydia, please unmute yourself. I will be taking notes as well. So if anyone sees me away from the computer, please do not take that as offense. I am taking notes as well. Yes. Um, well, just briefly, um, they are pushing this uh, as a way to increase business in the city. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've actually talked to people who own businesses, not many independent store owners left, and they'll tell you that the reason um, that they're being pushed out is because gouging rents, all right, that we need some kind of commercial rent control. They also talk about now that shoplifting is a major expense. This is even true for, yes. this is even true for the places like Rite Aid or Dwayne Reed. Everything's under mm -hmm. plastic now. Yep. We have petty crime, we have homelessness. You know, I mean, the again, going back to this issue of rent too, it's like people are spending so much money, by the way, on rents. I'm talking to people that are living in apartments that they can't really support these local businesses either. They're not being able to buy as much. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm an old timer now, but when I was a kid, they used to say, you only spend 25% of your monthly income on rent. Now it's 40, 50, 60, 70%. People, working people can't afford to live in this city anymore. So the real issue is not that, you know, the businesses don't have enough space or they want to be able to operate something on your roof so you can get also into an elevator with somebody you don't know. We don't know what kind of garbage they're going to be creating, what they're mm -hmm. going to be doing up there. I mean, it's that's bull. Okay, this is a way of just making it more of a wild west. We have a problem with real estate in this city, and this mayor, and I'll finish this as we all know, is in the pockets of big real estate. Yeah. And we are in serious trouble in this city. They had an article in the Daily News today that a lot of people will not invest here because we seem to be in such trouble. A lot of the big cities across the country, by the way, are facing this kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I find this is just bull, okay? I'm sorry. There you go. No, it's good. I agree, Lydia. Uh, um, who's who's there? Hey, it's me. I, thought, I okay, don't want to get no ahead of anybody. Um, Hi, but, no, go ahead, Lisa. And, and I was, I, I understand because when you walk down Broadway or even Amsterdam, there are so many vacant stores that are up for rent that it's it it's. It's like a ghost town almost. And then you have so many homeless and, and people that need mentally ill and people that need, it's like zombie land is what we call it. From 136th Street to 138th Street, you know, when Dwayne Reed and all these places have guards because it's so bad. And then they, they steal it and come right outside and put it on the street and, and, and try to sell it to you. 
but there's a lot of stores that are losing businesses, restaurants and everything. And it, I, I, you know, it's not what it used to be. And, and to talk about the mayor and not just him, but elected officials in our community are not taking into consideration what's going on in our communities. Does anyone else want to speak? I had thoughts of my own I wanted to add as well. I wanted to uh, just mention some of the things in the proposal. Some of the proposals talk about businesses that require certain structures um, now being able to operate outside of those requirements. So for instance, maybe somewhere where you have to have high ceilings, that's in one of the proposals, they may not, they may be able to operate without those high ceilings. However, what you'll have to keep in mind is if a business that needs high ceilings for sound or for manufacturing purposes is now allowed to maybe take the first, the ground floor of an apartment building. We all know those apartment buildings that have storefronts at the ground floor and they can do that. How does that affect the people living in that building? And so while there may not, I realize everyone here may not want to engage this conversation. You all need to be aware of it because it, again, this may affect everyone where they live. They're not just talking about in Manhattan, they are going through the five boroughs uh, slowly but surely. So it's something to keep in mind as you go into the next election season, as you're voting in these midterm elections. I know we just we just had some, but just in general, we'll have a, a few more in another year or so. Um, I don't necessarily want those things operating on the premises. I know that um, now maybe someone next door to me can have some daycare, which I'm not trying to hate on anyone's effort to make money. Let me be clear. A hustle is a hustle. However, affecting one's quality of life is important as well. Noise pollution is a thing. And can I expect these people to be held up to the same, I don't know, rigors of business in terms of cleanliness and different uh, rules and things like that? So I just implore everyone here to make themselves familiar with the City of Yes planning document. If you want access to it, I am happy to send it to you. Um, but this is a conversation that we do need to have. And there will be a public session that Community Board 9 is having January 18th. Everyone here is invited. Feel free to invite others so that we can get into the conversation. It's important to make our feelings and opinions known. And if you're all for it, that's great. Talk about that too. And talk about why we should all be for it so that we can get that different of opinion. Before I, I don't want to close it without, uh, Tiago has his hand up. Tiago, please feel free to unmute yourself and go for it. Floor is yours. I mean, yeah, I feel like my initial thoughts, and I'll just try to keep it to the youth education part of this, but my thoughts are that it's this sort of, well, I might just be cynical, but this has struck me as a bit of a way to for businesses who have, as previously mentioned, the resources to take over vacant storefronts post pandemic, to mm -hmm. you know, take over from formerly community based organizations or smaller stores. Because, well, especially with, I think it's proposal to, with the uh, increase of allowing certain uh, businesses in zoning and basically freeing up these storefronts for big business or bigger businesses specifically and quite frankly just taking away real estate and I mean yeah it just feels like a capitalization on the post-pandemic fallout mm. shall we say but that that feels like more of a uh thing for the open forum but the, these are my initial thoughts no 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 that's really good that's why i wanted to begin a conversation here as well um the team that's handling it the uh, housing and land use committee they have a lot of work ahead of them so it's really important for us especially as community board members to help them out so that is very welcome. I'm adding your notes to that as well. Lydia, you have your hand up. Did you want to say something else or should I? Okay, I can put it down if you want. <laughs> no worries. All right. 
So with that said, uh, Deirdre, unless you have any objection, I was going to... You can did you ahead. have your hand up, Deirdre? I did have my hand up, but then... Oh, um, my goodness. Please pardon me. Tiago and everything that was said, I think, was basically covered. I think a lot of it, too, just looking at um, using more streets for loading docks and berths and all of these things that they're putting is um, kind of like just um, creating a place where the community has no space, right? Um, yep. Away from this new... Lo to zoning, I mean, just the initiative that they want to take away more um, space or parking, more things on the street to create more walking space and all this stuff that they're coming up with. Yep. Part of it, like yep. the other said, is a capitalization ploy, but also a, a place to just continue to to, to displace and uh, get rid of community um, businesses, mm -hmm. right? Because it's not affordable. And I think this goes all the way back to prior administration where the Bloomberg administration stated that they wanted to make New York City a place where they had luxurious condominiums and iconic office buildings and bringing it to be a hub for other businesses. So hence for people in community, if you can't afford to pay the rent or pay the prices, keep moving as far down as you can until you get to where you can afford. Um, right. So not to rant, but yeah, I agree with everything no. that you said and for us. And thank you for just um, sharing that in this public forum on the 18th. So please, please, please um, make your voices heard, make your concerns known, and let's go move on. Thank you. Oh, well said, Deirdre. Yeah, well said. Lydia, you wanted to say something? Just one more thing is that um, please. Th there's been little control over real estate in the city to begin with. They throw up buildings all over the place. They overshadow uh, you know, other buildings cutting off sunlight yep. um, and fresh air. They put an incredible pressure on the infrastructure, sanitation, um, you could go sewage, whatever. Yep. So they have had little control. Um, and so I'm just hoping that um, in this, they're obviously going to promote it at this session, but I think people should get a lawyer or a tenant's lawyer to really look at what this is going to entail, what to illustrate what the ramifications of something like this are, because it could happen. And then there's the law of unintended consequences. We would be seeing yes. in our area. Life is very hard in the city right now with all of the social problems we have. Why don't they address these problems of inequity here? Not the fact that they want business to be able to run amok here. You know, the reason why we're losing businesses is what we've just talked about. It's just really poverty, you know, rent gouging. Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to emphasize, I hope everybody will go because this is going to affect your life on a daily basis. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Lydia. I agree. Uh, I want to be very weary of what's happening in City Hall right now because I don't think that it is for the residents. I don't think that any of the, the budget cuts that have been happening to schools uh, and to our infrastructure in general. And I would like to say as well, I hope everyone's paying attention to what's happening on the trains right now. There's been issues on the red line all week. And this is just like the, the, the beginning of something where they've been talking to the mayor about infrastructure repairs, including MTA, and nothing's been done. And so we have things like this affecting our lives. It seems small, but it snowballs. All right. With that said, I'm going to start our presentation. Um, we have about seven speakers this evening. I may not have room for anyone uh, to jump in, but if we do, we absolutely will. We like to have everyone try to be able to speak, but I just want to put that out there. All right. Uh, the Prescott Institute for Sport, Teamwork, and Education. Is Sarah here or one of her associates? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Okay. Hey. Wonderful. Please unmute yourself. Um, did you have to, did you want to show a presentation at all? Yeah. Am I able to share my screen? Yes, but Deirdre, you're host now. So please, uh, and you can make me, you can make me host or co-host whatever you want. And I can take care of that, but please uh, make her co-host for now and we'll figure it out. Thank you. Okay. Of course. Thank you. Okay. I think I should be able to do it now. Okay. Let me make this. Full screen. First of all, thank you so much for having us. Um, it's great to speak with you all today. Oops, that is not how I okay. Is it in is it in presentation mode now? It is? Okay. Okay. 
Here we go. Okay, so the Prescott Institute for Sport Teamwork and Education, um, we also call it PEACE, uh, which is uh, the fencing strip. Um, so we usually, when we're fencing, we fence on something called the PEACE, which is the fencing strip. So there's two meanings to our name, um, but a little bit more about our organization. We are a 501c3 community fencing program that provides um, free fencing um, lessons and sessions to kids all throughout New York City. Um, our mission is to develop high performers in fencing and also in life um, through a sustainable education op um, option. Um, we build strong character leaders through our martial art of fencing um, and also provide other educational experiences too. So a little bit about our founder, Nzinga Prescott. She is an Olympic fencer and a world champion. She went to Stuyvesant High School and fenced at Columbia University as well, um, a Brooklyn native. Um, uh, an, a nice quote from her, my experience is a testament to the power of sport. I was the only one in my neighborhood with access to Olympic caliber coaching, and we want to change that. Fencing is more than a sport. It empowered me to access incredible successes in my athletic, academic, and professional life. The mission of our program is to share this gift with the next generation. So really what we're doing here is not just offering a free fencing program, but we are offering a holistic education. So how can we use fencing to also teach children skills that that, that can translate into um, their life outside of the sport? Again, um, we're really focused on community, creating a space where we can nurture this kind of learning, um, education, and then also access to quality uh, fencing education. Some of the programs that we offer is a summer program that we started with in 2020 called Fencing in the Park. Um, that's an introductory free fencing summer camp uh, that we do in Marine Park. Um, then we have our academy, which we just opened up in Canarsie. We have our own club out there. Um, and the bulk of what I'll be talking about is going to be our school programs because we have partnered with two schools in, in Harlem, um, Eagle Academy and Hamilton Grange, which I'll talk about a little bit more. Um, but through our school programs, we've been able to uh, work with kids all over New York City. Then we also do community clinics and demos. Um, so we'll stop by different um, neighborhoods and maybe put up a uh, um, like a fencing demonstration on the streets so kids uh, could get introduced to the sport and if they're interested possibly sign up for one of our programs. Okay so community need. Um, so although there are sports opportunities that exist um, there's an absence of proper fencing programs um, in West Harlem so through providing more fencing education, we can obviously create more opportunities for developing fencing skill, but also foster academic and personal growth, um, financial accessibility, so making the sport more accessible to more children, um, creating more opportunities for mentorship and role models, physical health and well-being, um, and social integration and community building. This is an article from the New York Times that came out um, last year talking about how exceptionally expensive the sport is. Um, so it's hard to break into the sport because usually it requires a pay to play model. Um, the gear itself is expensive, membership to a club and lessons. So uh, the goal at Peace is to make sure we address that opportunity gap um, by offering partnering with local schools, so public and charter schools around New York City to offer programming for students there, um, and also at our academy space um, in Brooklyn. So a little bit about our program overview, and this is a nice picture of some of our students that we've worked with in the past. Um, so for our school programs, we partner, like I said, with public and charter schools and independent schools around um, New York City. Uh, right now, we're partnered with two in West Harlem, and our packages vary depending on what the school needs are. So we're always really flexible working with the schools. So a schedule might change. Sometimes it's an after school program. Sometimes it's a club or a gym substitute. Um, and in our classes, we always focus on these key pillars, which is discipline, um, so maintaining their focus, ability to, to regulate their emotions, um, uh, tackle challenges, um, and take risks. Strategic thinking, which is a huge part of fencing. Um, a lot of people call fencing physical chess. So problem solving, working through those challenges. How can you outsmart your opponent? Um, 
fitness as well. Uh, it's a sport, so it requires a lot of endurance and strength. And we try to discuss um, the importance of health and keeping our bodies healthy, um, stretching, um, and being really intentional about our movements. Um, respect is a really big pillar of ours as well. Um, teamwork is hugely important, uh, making sure we salute our referees, our opponents, um, our coaches, um, and then working collaboratively in our practices. So a basic curriculum um, could look very different depending on the school, um, but here's a sample of what an eight week program would look like for a one hour session a week. Um, we usually start off the first week with an introduction to fencing. So gaining an understanding of fencing history and learning the basic movements. Week two, we'll move into the attack. How can you execute an attack? Week three, we move into defense. Um, four, uh, disengage, so countering a defense. Week five, they learn these rules of right of way, which is um, a way of refereeing uh, in fencing. Um, then you have week six, tactical wheel. So that's decision making, strategic thinking, problem solving. Uh, week seven, we do a team event. So that means that they're competing within teams. Again, focusing on that teamwork component and then it ends with a competition where they fence an individual competition and so this is an opportunity for them to see uh, their progress um, and then really cash out on all the hard work that they're doing throughout the the course um, and and then also celebrate the hard work that they're doing by ending with a competition we have a medal ceremony or they get certificates um, so each each student um, is awarded for their hard work um, one hour sessions can typically look like a warm up. Um, there's a strength and conditioning portion of it, um, footwork, change, change into equipment. So they actually put on their fencing uniform so they can spar with each other. Um, they do some kind of drilling or situational bouting. Bouting is what we call um, a match in fencing. Then they bow with each other, so they spar, um, and then they get undressed. Maybe they'll circle up, do a reflection of the day, and then meet back again for the next week. So our coaching philosophy um, at Peace is that our coaches are also role models. So again, really important to us is the community aspect. Um, so we're building meaningful relationships, not just with our students and coaches, but also fostering friendships. Um, again, teamwork, leadership opportunities. Um, that's incorporated always into our, the games that we play, the drills that we do. Um, cultural competency is also pivotal in our program. Our team is mostly comprised of a very diverse group of Olympic, internationally ranked, and NCAA fencers. Um, a majority of our coaches are female identifying or people of color. Um, and again, our commitment to representation just extends to nurturing diverse coaches and to lead uh, culturally sensitive classes. So the WHDC grant um, utilization and outcome. So with this grant, we've been able to partner with um, the Eagle Academy for Young Men of Harlem. And this is our first time partnering with this school. So it's very exciting. Um, we have, we broken the program up into two programs. Our first program is an 11 session program for 21 seventh and eighth graders. So that actually just wrapped up on the third. Uh, so the students that you see in these photos receive their certificates for successfully completing the program. Um, they they learned basic fencing foundations and then ended the, the program with a competition, a small scrimmage. Um, and now we just picked up our nine session program for our 14 sixth graders. So they'll be doing exactly what the seventh and eighth graders did um, and then ending with an in-house scrimmage as well. Um, be, this grant has also allowed us to partner again with Hamilton Grange Middle School, which is our longest standing New York City school program. It's now in its fourth year of collaboration. Um, and through this program, we've had two time middle school athletic league champions. Um, when we first came to this school, there was no culture for fencing. Um, a lot of the students have never seen it before or heard of it or been exposed to it. So the buy-in was 
like people, a lot of the students were very skeptical about, about fencing and joining the program. Um, and then over the years, we've had, uh, we've had a lot of interest by the, by the students on all grades. Um, now we have up to 60 students signing up. Um, so we have a, a, a constant wait list. Um, so originally we planned this year to do an hour and a half session with uh, 15 students, but because of the demand, we split the session up into two 45 minute periods, allowing for an additional 15 students. So now we can accommodate 30 students um, for a 32 session program, 16 sessions per group. So through uh, this funding that we've received, um, we've been able to expose 95 students to fencing. Um, we've had eight students visit Columbia University as well to learn about the collegiate opportunity of fencing, um, to hear more from collegiate fencers and, the, and what it's like to compete in the NCAA. So sometimes uh, we're also able to um, arrange uh, field trips. So for our students at Hamilton Grange, we are able to coordinate with the uh, NCAA champion um, fencing team and head coach to have them come in and visit the school and to hear from the fencers and the coaches themselves. Um, for more than 20 students participated in a scrimmage or a competition and in, in those competitions, learning um, the value of practice and repetition and focus. Um, students have participated in intensive, intensive physical activities. Uh, so really like boosting their, um, their stamina, their strength, um, learning the importance of preparing our bodies before we go into our fencing, so stretching, meditation, and things like that. Um, students also, again, learn our key pillars, a value of discipline, strategy, problem solving through fencing. So goals and vision for impact. So we divided up our goals into short term and long term. Um, in the next two or three years, uh, we hope to um, offer high performance fencing training to 50 students enrolled in our academy by 2025. Um, we would like to help students through our tutoring program into get into specialized high school admissions um, for peace students. Uh, expand our access to free one-on-one -on -one tutoring to our school programs. So right now we offer tutoring programs for our academy only, which is based in Brooklyn um, with, with more support in the future, possibly with um, another grant, we'd be able to extend that tutoring uh, opportunity to students in our school programs as well. Um, acquire funding and partners to expand academy model to other location increase school programming to serve 10 to 15 schools each year by 2024, partner with network of schools, organizers, and recreational centers, um, and, and having more students compete nationally by 2024, which is now, so later in the end of the year. Um, so reaching for our long-term goals, reaching more than 1,000 students each year across New York City, transitioning 10% to high-performance pathways each year, uh, build a for-profit model a component for sustainability of academy model, develop a curriculum to train new coaches on the principles of fencing, incorporating character education and martial art principles, and support the development of the other no-cost academies in New York City across the U.S. Okay. So thank you. Um, for more information about Peace, feel free to visit our website um, and our Instagram. And if you have any inquiries about the program at all, please feel free to contact me. Um, my email is listed right here. Thanks again right. for your time. And Sarah, actually, would you be so kind to put your email in the chat? Sure. Uh, as well, so that way people can always just copy and paste in the website if you like. Uh, that's Definitely. fantastic. So I have a question. If it's an NCAA sport, does that mean that there are also scholarships available for fencing to colleges? Yes, definitely. Really? Yeah, there are, there are also scholarships available. Um, there are. That. Yeah, yeah. So actually, so it depends on the school. So some schools offer scholarships. Unfortunately, in Ivy's, I don't think you can get a sports specific scholarship, um, <laughs> but there are a ton of there are a ton of schools in the U.S. that have fencing programs um, and, and you can get a scholarship for that. Yeah. That's fabulous. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right. Good to know. I didn't know that. Uh, I want to open up the floor if anyone has any questions or comments. I love what you're doing with the students. I will say I wish you were able to do more than uh, 30 since you have such a large wait list at Hamilton Grange. Uh, and I, 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 yeah, I know we, we, we wish we could as well. And obviously like budget 
plays into that as well. Um, yes, of course. But but that's what we're hoping for, more partnerships, um, especially in West Harlem. Um, and so we can expand more access to our classes. That's fantastic. Please keep up the good work and keep us updated. Uh, I would love to know uh, the fencing in the park, but that doesn't yes. happen in Manhattan, does it? It happens in Marine Park in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Okay, I went on your website before you came, so I was thinking about it. If you do decide to move anything to Harlem or even to Manhattan, let us know, and we will Definitely. share it with our communities. Yeah, that'd be great. Definitely, we do some... Thank you. We do some community demos in the summertime um, in Manhattan as well. Um, so that's an opportunity for students or anyone really, adults are welcome as well to stop by uh, one of our booths and learn how to, to fence with our coaches um, and just to get exposed to it, uh, to see how you like it. And then we can sort of support you in, in going into different channels of fencing from there. Oh, that's very cool. Deidre, I see you have your hand up. Please feel free to floor is yours. Yeah, so I wanted to say to Sarah, thank you. And the same thing that Monique commented that it is a uh, wonderful opportunity. I just wanted mm -hmm. to shoot, I wanted to fence, but you know, in the high school. But anyway, I, I wanted to ask a question um, with the community programming and coming out to the streets. Um, do you do like outreach, um, outreach fairs or, or closed streets, you know, when they have the su summer programs? Yeah. Um, is so yeah, we, sorry, go ahead. You too. Uh -huh attend like a, a open um streets fair yes um we've we have done that um we do that in the summertime mostly because that's you know when when the streets are warm enough to do it um but we've done it with new york presbyterian in the past they have the open streets um so that's definitely something that we've done before and are always looking to do more of all right that's awesome yeah yes please like i said keep us updated if there's any events or anything like that we'll be sharing with uh, our communities, including people on this call as well. Definitely, will do. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Sarah. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Marie, Marie, Hi. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Uh, please tell us what's new at Act at St. John Divine, and I will mute myself. The floor is yours. Marie, do you need to share your screen at all? I would love to share my screen. All right. Deirdre, I think we'll have to make you co-host. All right, give her one moment. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. You're co-host now, Marie. Yes, perfect. Great. Okay. So let's see how this works. Nope. Don't know how to do this. <laughs> it can be a little tricky. It does. In the it intro, used to be easy. That, it used to be easy. They changed some things around. They did called they? themselves because, updating. Yes. Man. Yes, they did. It used to they be that I could popular. just click it and see my entire yes. screen. And then you also you see everything, whether you want to see everything or not, is another story. But you right. be able to see everything. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> That's what happens with popularity. They changed something that was working perfectly well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you get back to your own screen now? That's I wish I could walk you through it, but I don't even. No, that's okay. That you don't time. worry. Don't worry. I'm like, let's see. <laughs> let's just give me one second, everyone. And All right. then we will jump in. Because there's only one thing showing up on my screen when I say share, which is ridiculous. That's odd. Yeah. Let's see. No. Uh-oh. Did I disappear? uh well oh, no. no no i mean no, no I, you're I, there my screen just went haywire so you might have to click something else on top of it right right so one thing we're gonna do is this. <laughs> you guys are really patient that just nope nothing all right um let me see what do I, if i do share what happens nothing i have no clue what that means Okay, forget about it. So at the bottom of your screen and yeah, and okay, screen, yeah. So click on that where it says share screen. Where it says share screen. Yeah, I did. And then it should you should be able to click on your desktop or wherever it is where you have that presentation and open it. Ah, found it. Man, you guys are good. Thanks, D. How's that? All right, fabulous, teamwork. Fabulous. 
All right. Teamwork. <laughs> Excellent, All right, guys. Okay, well, I'm going to do the five-minute presentation as instructed. Uh, my name is Marie Del Tejo. I'm the executive director of the ACT programs here at the Cathedral Church of St. John the Divine. We are celebrating our 53rd year of providing quality service. And um, it's a very diverse group. We go from teens to tots, tots to teens, and we offer a variety of programs. But what the um, West Harlem Development Corporation grant uh, provides us is um, opportunities for family, low-income families and community board nine area to come to a quality program uh, camp that's a country camp in the middle of the city. And we provide a safe and fun country camp in the city. They were outdoors mainly, unless the weather tells us to be inside. We have a garden, we do team building activities. We have a traditional day camp activities because we feel that it supports emotional, social emotional growth in all the children. And it gives them an opportunity to be expressive. They learn problem solving. They learn accountability. A lot of the skills needed for, you know, to really work in, as a team. And when they're in school or in, in programs after school, that's, you know, where they're working on their own, um, what opportunity do they have to really be kids with other kids? And that's us. So what the grant does is that we uh, reach out to families in the Community Board 9 area and let them know that the camp is free. And um, these are the fees. And it's from, you can do 8 to 6, you can do 9 to 4, you can do, you know, there's a variety. Um, and as one parent wrote, you know, if her daughter, her, she loved that her daughter had the opportunity to continue at camp the uh, last summer um and it was a wonderful experience and she met lots and lots of friends um we had 11 families applied and but we could because of the funds we only could have awarded to five families um and six families either declined an award because it was too far to travel or we just didn't have enough money to give them for the um to 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 attend um why us why us over any other camp um we have a 7 day full day of training um but mainly we teach the staff about group management and we are one of the you know we we really are teaching and training our staff that there are no time out you can't exclude a child from pro, from an activity and that they, the, the staff must know how to use measurable words to describe the behavior. They should be able to anticipate when the behavior is about to happen so that the consequence, not the punishment, the consequence is really thinking how that the child can fit better into that group. Um, and we have a lot of senior staff I've been here 33 years. I have a staff 17, another one 22. And all of us really work in um, teaching our staff. We also work closely with um, the Meeting House After School, which is a program that has social emotional um, therapists and um, leaders who go to programs to teach staff how not to say, oh, you're shy. Oh, you're just angry words that describe a child when they, that word may not have been the word to describe the child's behavior. So we put out a flyer, we set, we're setting up our flyer and the way we feel that will reach the most families is not through advertisement in magazines and books, and but it's through, we email the parents who attended last year through the grant, because we feel the consistency and the friendship that the children formed is really important. And then 
the families who live in the neighborhood of Community Board 9 are given hard copies so that they could um, post at the libraries, the schools, the laundries, the churches, all the community centers. Um, if you know, which some of you might, the Cathedral St. John the Divine Act program, it was really started by this person named Jose V. Torres, who just passed away on Tuesday. Um, and our goal is to really continue his legacy. And he, re, he the way that act started was because he saw that he worked at the cathedral school and he saw that a lot of the children of privilege were able to enjoy leaving the city and going to the country. But a lot of the children who could not afford it had no opportunities to enjoy a country life. And he and that's how ACT Camp Oasis became what it is today. Um, and our mission is, is to keep his legacy alive and to continue offering a very diverse community to everyone. And that's my speech. Well, now what? Marie, I was telling you in the chat, I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. It, it that was means that, thing. and when you came, he was there. Mm -hmm. So maybe he got you started as well. He did. Um, I'm we, so sorry. We, I don't know how to get out of this. <laughs> you're going to have to hit something that says stop sharing. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right, right? Let's see. Oh, here we I go. Stop sharing. Maybe at the time. I, I don't like this new system. I just want you to know. Now I that, know. I hear you. I promise I, I hear you. Look on that top right there where it says share and see if that drop down. You see a little red part on the top right? This one. No, no. This on the top right, there's something red. Oh, here. here. Yeah, See yeah, if yeah. that drop down. This one. Gives you an op yeah. Okay. No, no that's share that. the whole thing. Yeah, no, that's a share. All yeah. right, so there should be something else on your screen that asks you to oh, stop here. sharing, but I don't know. Stop share. Oh, fabulous. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> that's the hardest part. And you know, I even, you saw I came in early so I can have it all ready. Yes, I know, but don't worry. Don't worry. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Um, I want to say really quickly, it's something you said, I really want to hit on it. And I want everyone to hear me. The mentioning of having the staff trained well, I want to uh, applaud you. And I want to tell you how important this is, something I've run into as a parent many times. And as a community board member, I've heard from other parents where you have a great program and the staff fails to highlight how great the program is because they haven't been able to properly train the staff. How you talk to children and how you interact with children matters. It completely warps their perception of the program and it can warp it in a great way or in a not so great way to a point where they do not receive the information. Uh, so when you are not labeling children and telling them what they are, because they may be something other than shy, they may, they may be angry, they may not. So it's great for us to not label that and teach them how to label their feelings and emotions and how to communicate that effectively. And so I really want to applaud you on behalf of a lot of parents because it will provide these children with a better opportunity to speak for themselves right. and feel better about their experience. And as to take ownership. Day. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. And to take ownership. Yes. Yes. As opposed to being told all day who they are and what they are, as right. which is not our jurisdiction. We're taking away their agency at that point. So I want to applaud you. I think that's fantastic. Please keep up the good work. Such Thank a wonderful you. thing to do. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And so, I wanted I, to ask you, yes. well, so sorry, Marie, real quick. Um, you mentioned something that I wanted to ask about. Oh, are, are you still doing year long programs? I know you mentioned the summer program. Are you still doing stuff during the year as well? Yes. Yes, we are. Okay. But, um, Last year, we were able to fund it for a child to come, or kids to come to our nursery. Mm -hmm. But now we have we're totally DOE. Okay. So we okay. have we can have twenty eight children for DOE threes and fours, mm -hmm. and our wait list is nine hundred. Wow! And parents, the portal opens tomorrow. You should see my emails. Yeah, just... oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. 900 waitlists. God bless um, you, Marie. And also, <laughs> I, I mentioned um, briefly about the training program and the ABCs to group management. 
And if anybody wants to it's reach so out to me, I'm glad so I know. The dog? <laughs> um, if you want to reach out, I'll gladly walk you through it or make okay. a short presentation to your staff. Um, sometimes I found that outsiders saying the exact same thing to your staff that you've been saying, all of a sudden they hear you. They hear it. Yes. Well, that's like that's like anything. Like, you know, parenting, anything else. You can tell your kid a hundred times. They come home and they say, oh, Miss So-and-so told me. You kidding? I told you 400 times. <laughs> but yes, I, I believe that to be 100% true. All right. Thank you so much, Marie, for your presentation. If you would be so kind, although I guess you already have a wait list, but if anyone is interested in the uh, X program for the summer, uh, maybe you can put the website in the chat. Yeah. And uh, yes, so that way they can share with their uh, communities if they wish. All right. Thanks so much, Marie. It's great Thank to hear you. from you. <laughs> uh, I know I saw America scores. Forgive me, I'm on my phone, so everything's condensed. And who's here? Oh, and Alicia and Deidre have their hand up. Oh, Deidre, I didn't know you. Have to... Sorry. No I'm worries. not the host anymore, so I can't see who's raising their hand. Oh. So then ask my, that's my job, right? That's why I'm here. Or you, or make me the host because it'll pop up and it says like Alicia has her hand up. Okay, so please, okay, no, no, pardon no. me, um, Deidre and then Alicia. Go ahead. So sorry. Um, so thank you, Marie, for your wonderful presentation. It's great. It definitely is great to have a day camp in the middle of uh, the city, right? Uh, a country camp. Yep. Yeah. I was just going to, I was going to ask you. I actually went to the website, right, to look for the 3K pre-K 3K, and noticed that, right, that it was DOE, and you're saying the portal opens tomorrow, and you have 900 on the wait list. And well, that was last year. I We don't know anything this year. Oh, okay. So with that said, I'm just asking, because it's in sure. the community, how does that work briefly? I mean... Well, DOE is the one that scrambles. First, our, our threes go into our fours. Okay. But we only mm -hmm. have 12 and then uh we can take six we could take six uh sixteen fours. So the three twelves okay. go into the fours, leaving what four spaces for okay. for DOE to do the lottery. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Right. Yeah. Alicia. Hi, Miss Marie. How are you? Hi. One of your Hi. former students here. Oh. And span. So I'm telling you guys, it was an it's an amazing program. Uh, outdoors year round, and um, she came home with. Uh, they went to see bees' nests, and they had the oh yes, the, the, the things that they put over them, the covering and um, bee covering. Yeah, it was like a, a a school outside year round, and it was really good. Only inclement weather, they were inside and if it was cold, they were doing things outside. It is an excellent program. And, yes, you know, from the, there, she went to the Columbia School. So that's how well, you know, because this one here, I used to call her Shady Baby because she was not very sociable. And when she went to this program, she became more outgoing, you know. She wouldn't speak, she wouldn't, you know, smile, but now she definitely does. And she's reading a third grade level in first grade. Oh, that's so, fantastic. Yeah. So this is one Thank of your you. students, Blue former course, students yes. here. <laughs> Thank the you so much. For Thank program. you. Thank you. Thanks for those kind <laughs> words. We do have a bee, a bee grant from Whole Foods. So we do a whole beef study. And uh, yes, our class, our 4K classroom is outside. And even in the winter, they, they sleep outside in sleeping bags. Wow. I love that. And they haven't it's gotten it's very it's very normal in other countries. It's yes. just like, you know, we we act like it's strange here, but it's very normal outside of the US. Um, yeah. our, well, our, our, our staff US, do but... that. Our staff reach out the staff to does it too. I love lots it. Lots of programs. Obviously. Yeah. Our it's staff cool. reach out to everybody to um <laughs> so so our pre-K teacher is in touch with um, teachers in Finland and you know Norway who have out total outdoor classrooms. I was thinking about Finland. <laughs> they are the educational example. They are amazing. Right. Yeah. 
All right, wonderful. And now I can't see hands. So if anyone oh, has I'm, their hands up, please no let hands. me know. Um, no hands. Okay. I'm to help you move it along All right. to Charlene. <laughs> I've made you the co host so you can go ahead. And yes. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year, um, Charlene. Hi. Hi, hi. Uh, we're not going to have a presentation. Um, I'm. My name is Charlene Jordan. I'm the grants manager at America Schools. And I'm here with my colleague, Veronica, who is the Marketing Hi. and Communications Director um, at America School. So we'll just be, you know, talking about what we do and feel free to ask us questions at the end. So America Scores was founded, well, America Scores New York was, we started in the West Harlem, Washington Heights area back in 2001. And we were founded to address um, the dearth of high quality after school programs that for local underfunded public schools. Um, we are a leader in social justice in youth and sports based in youth development. Uh, we use poetry, soccer, and civic engagement uh, to engage youth of color in. Um, Social, social emotional um, learning, all pillars are teamwork, leadership, and commitment. Um, some, we, we serve, our core, pro, core programs is elementary and middle school. So we serve youth ages eight through 13. And in the West Harlem area in particular, I believe we're in six schools, Hamilton Grange being one of them, um, PS 192, 125, MS and PS 161, just to name a few. Um, our elementary school students develop literacy and self-expression through our Power Poetry program, which we've just uh, ended in the fall. And that is commenced by a uh, poetry slam, which Veronica will tell you more about. In the, in the spring, the poetry moves to civic engagement um, through writing it for the community. Um, it's basically where they take um, the social justice topics that they've written about in the fall and they create community projects in the, in the spring. For our middle school, civic engagement is in the form of our One Hen Academy and that's a financial literacy program. Um, in that program, they, um, they learn about money management, starting a business. There's also opportunities for them to get a micro loan, like a, it's that kind of like a shark tank, if you will. Um, and then they start a business and they go through that process. Um, all year round, we have our soccer program. And all year round, meaning we do it in the fall, in the spring. We also have winter clinics based on the availability of the school. And we have a six-week summer camp in West Harlem for our Bronx and um, Manhattan participants and in Brooklyn for Brooklyn participants. Um, at all the grade levels, they develop um, leadership, critical social emotional skills. And yeah, that's, that's basically um, what we do. We also have um, an alumni program, a few. We have Kicking It Forward, which engages high school, youth, high school and college age youth. Um, we have Saturday Night Lights, which is our Saturday program. Um, and it's a, for at-risk youth, it's our um, violence prevention program that we, we have like a indoor soccer league um, on Saturdays. And we also have a Coaching for Change Academy, which we partner with Nike for also high school and college age youth, where we, um, where youth have the opportunity to, um, it's like career development, um, if they're interested in being coaches or um, a career in, in, in sports management, they have the ability to do that. And just like, I'm sorry if I'm gonna butcher this price, the, the, first, the first organization that made their presentation, we're really big on mentor-mentee relationships. So the youth who, who are in this program, they coach the core participants and, our, and we hire teachers from the, from the schools we partner with as coaches. 
So there's this, there's this multi-generational, um, yeah, multi-generational uh, way about the way we do run our programming or mentorship throughout everything we do. And I'm going to just chime in quickly. Like Charlene mentioned, I'm Veronica. I'm the market communications manager at America's Scores. Um, apologies for being video off, but these high wind warnings are messing with my service. Um, so like Charlene mentioned, we're really big on social justice and social justice youth development. And we're very aware of the fact that um, making sure that youth feel empowered about their ability to create change is really centered in our program. And that's reflected, especially in our poetry and civic engagement portions. Um, so throughout the fall season, we encourage our young people to observe what's happening in their community, observe what's happening in the world, reflect on it with their teammates and their coaches. And then we teach them both the skills, but give them the freedom to write about it in a way that feels uh, most authentic to them. And so they feel confident in performing it in front of their peers um, and the remainder of their community. And we do that at Riverbank State Park right in West Harlem. Um, I think recently we just had our poetry, Sam, like Charlotte mentioned about a month ago, the winners were a school um, that spoke about like different countries and what they eat and what culture and the importance of bringing culture together. Um, so they're seeing that reflected in their community and they're making sure to bring that to the forefront. And then in the spring, as Charlotte mentioned, we do civic engagement programming. So that includes um, a presentation from each of the schools and each of the teams. So for example, in the past, we had middle school students run bake sales with the micro loan that they've received so they can raise money to then donate that money to local food banks. Um, and last year, PS 153 in Harlem wrote letters to veterans because that presentation took place on Memorial Day weekend um, and recognizing veterans in their communities as well. Um, so there's a lot of pieces to America Scores programming that's a little bit unique when you say soccer and poetry and civic engagement. Um, but they all kind of work in tandem. It allows students to build vulnerability with their with their peers, with their fellow teammates on the soccer field, playing together, learning together, running together, and being able to get that physical education whilst being able to go into the classroom after they've built that teammate component um, and learn to play together, that they're able to be vulnerable with each other, talk about their feelings, talk about what they're seeing in their community and write about it. So that when the spring comes along, they can take everything they've learned from their poetry component and put writing for the community at the forefront. Um, Charlotte, I think I got, I hit most things, <laughs> but if you have any questions, yeah, you, please let us know. Yeah, you did. I just, just before you ask questions, thanks Veronica. I just wanna quickly talk about our theory of change. So again, we train public school teachers and community members to be coaches and mentors to our young people. That way we combat student disengagement and isolation that youth of color disproportionately face, especially coming out of the pandemic. We also implement a curricula to help Black and Latinx youth make sense of their world and see the value in their culture and neighborhood. Uh, we also develop concrete skills that empower them to contribute meaningfully in their community community as you can see that throughout civic engagement programming in the spring. Um, we also prepare our alum um, for of the program to take roles within the organization. Again, like three initiatives like coaching for change. So that is it. Any questions? Are there any Thank questions? you so much. Thank you, Charlene and um, Veronica. Um, I just wanted to share, Charlene, um, you know, soccer is uh, a definitely um, a sport. Um, I just had my grandson over the past summer. He changed his sport, like I can't tell you, but had me going <laughs> all the way buying soccer shoes and um, outposts or whatever this place is that I had to go find his soccer gear. And so um, just wanted to commend you and thank you for all the work that you're doing for our youth within our community and in our schools. Um, yes, per usual. Um, I did have one quick thing. You mentioned that they had a poetry slam. How did that go? Like, did a lot of it kids was... participate? And, okay, what I really want to know is, it's one thing to write poetry, but it's another thing to perform it. So mm -hmm. how were they able to deal with that anxiety? Do you anticipate that they'll continue, you know, participating, et cetera? Great question, it's Veronica. Oh, Sorry, <laughs> it's actually really interesting because um, the poetry is something that we were intent on doing 
throughout mm-hmm. the pandemic. Obviously, soccer is was not as possible. We had kids doing drills in their homes, but we were really intentional about the development of poetry, especially everything that was going on in the world and continues to go on in the world. So yeah. kids, when they are a lot of them, we started programming a little bit later in the fall this year, just because you know how it is with space accommodations and this, that, and the other. But um, a lot of students have the ability to practice enough to get on stage without any paper with full okay. confidence. You can you can wow. tell the students that have been there a little bit longer because they'll go and they'll be ready to roll. Um, but it's also kind of nice seeing those younger kids, those third graders who come in. It's their first poetry slam. They're a little bit nervous because there's been mm-hmm. several instances where, you know, They'll take a minute, they'll need to breathe, they'll stumble over their words, and the entire like stadium of kids is cheering for them, trying oh. to encourage them. I so love it that. ends up being really great. Yeah, it's really touching. It happens every year and it always gets like kind of emotional because you see these, they're encouraging each other. They know how hard it is to be in that spot. Um, right. So that's like that community and teamwork for kids that aren't even on their team. Um, but yeah. they, they do a really great job. That's yeah, fantastic. They, they perform both individually and as a group with their class. That's really fantastic. That's okay. That's great. That's all I wanted to know. Please keep up the good work. I remember when you came, you came last year and you told us about poetry and we were like poetry and <laughs> you know, you, you broke it all down and everything. And it's great to see that you've been continuing with this at your, at your organization. So please keep up the good work. Thank you so much. And we're thank really grateful for partners thank you. like West Harlem Development Corporation who keep yes. our work centered in yes. West Harlem. We're grateful for them. Too. Yeah, they, they're yeah. amazing. Yes, yes. And that's why we get to talk to everybody here. And we thank you all for your patience, by the way. Um, we do have a long meeting, but we're we're going through it at a decent pace. Uh, we can pick it up a touch, but uh, oh, Cynthia, I know you're going to give us some good news. So, oh, Cynthia, please, the floor is yours. I've been looking forward to hearing from you. When I saw you emailed us, I was like, all right, it's that time again. So, yes, please. Thank you. Uh, good Absolutely. evening, everyone. Um, I'm Ocynthia Williams, and I'm co-executive director with the Harlem Renaissance Education Pipeline, Incorporated. And um, I'm here with our partners from the Harlem Community School. We are here with um, Dr. Dawn DeCosta, who's the deputy superintendent, um, Dr. Sandy Johnson, who is the chair of Abyssinian Development Corporation, She's the founder of HREP, and she is right now being the director of our um, the program that we're going to talk about, the CRASEL program. And then we have with us um, our uh, newly hired program coordinator. She's the coordinator for the CRASEL project. Um, her name is Kyla Butts, and uh, my partner in everything writing and grants, um, Ms. Lori Blueweiss, who is the Abyssinian Development Corporation Administrator resource development and um, a programs. And um, again, my partner in writing all of the stuff that we write. Um, well, you're gonna hear tonight from Dr. DaCosta, from Dr. Johnson and from Kyla. Um, so this is our third year into this project. Um, West Harlem Development Corporation have, uh, they sponsored the pilot program and has continued to support us. And so uh, Kyla, you wanna go next to whoever? Go to the next slide. Yeah, so I wanted to introduce you to Dr. DeCosa, who could talk to us about what is CRASEL. Then she'll talk about the next slide is going to be about the wheel um, and just what all this is. Okay, Dr. Dr. DeCosta, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. What a pleasure it is to be here with you. Thank you so much for inviting me to attend. Um, I'm bringing <laughs> greetings from our superintendent, Dr. Port, and also Harlem Community School District 5. And we are very excited to be able to continue this project that we started to pilot a few years ago and now is one that is school-wide, I mean, district-wide, sorry. So all 23 of our schools are able to benefit from this work. Um, and so Cresol, stands for culturally responsive and affirming social emotional leadership and learning. And so basically um, it's important when you do this kind of work that we know is good for students. We know that students need to be seen and heard culturally 
um, but also socially and emotionally. And there's a certain approach that um, to cultural responsiveness that centers social emotional learning as well. And so this wheel is just a framework for the work that is being done across the district. Um, Kreisler was based on a study that I did at Teachers College in my doctoral program. And basically as a leader, as a school leader, I was a school leader in um, Harlem for 11 years as a principal. And so I learned a lot about how to approach this work and wanted to share that with all of the principals in Harlem Community School District 5. And so there are just components to this wheel that lead to that. And centrally, it begins with the adults. So it's important that the adults that are in front of children are also engaging in this work themselves before they're able to deliver this appropriately to children and create the environments where children can feel safe, seen, heard, nurtured, loved, cared for, et cetera. And we definitely are already seeing the effects after doing this work for a year. We're seeing great gains, not only in school culture and the way people feel about being in our schools, but also academically in the students. We have um, 17 of our schools that saw double digit gains in their uh, math assessment and all schools have seen gains in their ELA growth. And so for some people that need to see that correlation with when kids feel safe and heard and cared for, they are then able to learn in a positive learning environment and we're seeing the impact um, of that. So I'll turn it back over to you, oh, Cynthia and or Kyla. Yeah, you can go to the next slide. Yeah, and Kyla and Dr. Johnson, the two of you are up. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, so Senator Schumer and Gillibrand, as along with Representative Espaillat through the U.S. Department of Education, awarded the Abyssinian Development Corporation a federal grant of $1 million to support two years of the Crazy Expansion Project. Um, we reach stakeholders, our cohorts are guidance counselors, principals, assistant principals, um, parent coordinators, parents, CEC council members, students, caregivers, pretty much everyone, both within the schools and within the community are the people that we serve with this project. And we achieve that through, we achieve culturally relevant and social emotional learning through district-wide professional development and training that build exposure and awareness of equity inequity and racial injustice and identify concrete steps and practices to operationalize the goals of equity and inclusivity. And now I'm gonna introduce you to a few of, a, a few of our partners who um, we work with. Morningside Center, Multitasking Yogi, Executive Learning, Executive Leadership Institute, Yale Wooler, Pure Edge and Tech Row, so Morningside Center, what they do is they work with, for example, our parent coordinators, our guidance counselors, our social workers to hold restorative justice circles where they're able to express themselves and um, talk about the work that they're doing within the schools. Multitasking Yogi has visited all 23 schools in the district and has held yoga sessions with them, led students in yoga sessions um, at one of our lower schools during the pilot year. Some students were able to become yoga leaders. Executive Leadership Institute is giving our principals a star factor coaching model where they're able to learn a little bit about themselves as leaders, um, what their skill sets are, where they could use some growth, and they're able to really focus on themselves and making themselves better people so that they can better serve the community. They're all great people, but um, it just helps to, to have that reflection, that mirror. Then Yale Wooler is providing a training within the schools as well. Um, Pure Edge is doing brain breaks as well as informing us on stress and how we as a community can deal with it. And then Tech Row is our partner who is taking a documentary of the work that we're doing within the district. And now I'll pass it over to Dr. Johnson to talk a little bit about the work that we have been doing in the district over the fall semester. Oh, you're on mute, Dr. Johnson. 
Before I talk about the numbers, I'd just like to talk to you about the historical significance of this particular initiative. Um, we have been having the same conversation about our schools in District 5 for as many decades as I remember, I would say between six and seven decades. Under our new leadership, we are, they, we are really trying to change the spirit and the feeling and, and let everyone know that they're valued, our students are valued, our parents are valued. And so this particular grant for the first time is able to service everybody. It's not select schools. It's not just a few students, it's everybody in the 23 schools in District 5. And so to that point, we have seen 2,430 students all participate in a yoga session. We have 167 school-based educators who have participated in a professional development training to deal with trauma and community members, our parents, our parent coordinators, and our district administrators. Everyone on the same level, on the same page, working very hard to make sure that this project is successful. We just don't have one partner, we have five partners. And schools don't have to opt in to this training, but Every school, 100%, has opted to participate in the CRESO activities. So for the spring, we hope to see another 2,500 students. So by the end of the first year of grant, of the grant, we would have reached over 5,000. Okay, the next slide. Oh, is that it? Yeah, just yeah. one second. These are just- Carla, Hmm? I was just saying these are photos from some of our um, events that we've held so far in the spring. You can see on the bottom left corner, those are some of the students participating in the yoga center and the yoga trainings. Um, the top right is the Pure Edge training that we held past this past November, and we'll be holding another one tomorrow for parents. And the parents will also receive yoga sessions as well as yoga mats. Um, and then I believe in the other two corners are Morningside Center circles. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to open it up to you all if you have any questions. Mm -hmm. Just maybe a lot of praise. I saw somebody's hand up earlier. I'm trying to see the screen, but um, can you stop sharing? Okay. Of course. Thanks. I'm looking to see. Um, I don't. Oh. Lillian has her hand up from Artistic Dreams. Uh, Lillian, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you. Hello, everybody. And I want to say hello, especially to Dr. Don Brooks da Costa. How, how are you? It's great to see you. Um, I, I am so amazed by everything you've done, all of you as a team with this project. It's, uh, it's wonderful. I see a lot of overlap with Artistic Dreams at what we offer since, and I'm going to be speaking later, so I'm not going to go through with it, but we do. <laughs> cultural awareness, that's what we do. And we do cultural self-awareness. It's, it's something that we're working on uh, right now because it's so needed. So we're implementing that vastly in our programs in West Harlem now, and um, as well as a mindfulness art, visual arts program. So I just wanted to put that out there in case you look for additional partners. I see us as a perfect fit. <laughs> uh, we have the same goals and we're working, I'm sure we're working some of the same steps already. Uh, I just wanted to 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 say that openly, but also I wanted to ask, and when you do yoga sessions and all the other types of, of wonderful ther therapeutic um, sessions or classes for the community, because I saw it's not just students, teachers, parents, the whole community, how often are, are people involved in this? How often are students involved? Is it weekly? Is it monthly? Is it uh, a semester? A question that I have. So this is the, am I, on, am I on mute? No, we hear you. No, we can hear you. Okay, <laughs> so the sessions are different. For the multitasking yoga, um, the first year, the students only, they get two sessions for the year. And then 
based on the feedback and evaluation, we'll determine if we need to increase that for year two. For the school-based personnel, uh, it's a series of professional development sessions. So basically, if I had to give you a window of the number of sessions that the school-based community has, it's between eight and 10 sessions across the fall and spring semester. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I was just curious because one of our, uh, what we work for or as a goal is obviously to do as many sessions as possible because we like to go into a school for example, and, uh, and and work with them weekly, right? Because that's, and of course, assess. Uh, but that's where we, we see the results most. Um, but I know that it's a work in progress and that we have to start slowly. Uh, my point being that working towards doing it more continuously is going to be uh, the best, especially for students. I'm, I'm very, very much student oriented, but we're also interested in expanding our uh, what we do to adults, so it's very interesting what we're doing, what you're doing, and I'd love to learn, you know, how to, to we, we'd love to explore how to get to adults, not just children. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We'll be calling you. Yeah, I was gonna say, put your information in the chat for sure. And I was, just to kind of keep in mind that you start with the youth, they start with the adults and we meet in the middle. Uh, and everybody's covered that way. And so teamwork makes a dream work. So I commend you all. Like, this is really great. And I was saying it earlier. I don't know if you all heard me when I was talking about training adults and how they speak to children. This yeah. is incredibly important. It it genuinely affects your perception of every event, mm -hmm. how you deal with school, how you deal with that after school program, how you deal with that job, that internship, that special class. It was made better or worse by mm -hmm. the adult in charge and how they addressed you and how they respected you Absolutely. and how they engaged with you. And this is very important. So I'll stop talking, I'll, I'll go all night. Uh, Deirdre, <laughs> I see you have your hands up. So please, of course, feel free to unmute yourself. <laughs> uh, no, in the interest of time, I just wanted to say thank you to um, Dr. DeCosta, Johnson, Cynthia, and all the ATREP team, Ky Kyla. Amazing. Amazing work. And just to say thank you, I'm just, I'm just thrilled that 26, um, 26 students, uh, 26, 2,600, not 2,600. Yes. <laughs> looking to double that and beyond. And um, yeah, it was amazing. And just, I'm just grateful for the collaboration and the connections that are being made with these um, partnerships. So thank you. Um, yes. Thank you. Well, thank you all for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We hope to have you again soon. Uh, we don't have to wait a year. You you can always come and let us know that you'd like to be on the agenda. Give us an update. That is absolutely fine. Really. It's great to hear that. from you. Um, I'd yeah. like, like to make an announcement uh, since I have this opportunity. Um, nice. On February 7th, uh, there's going to be a state of the district uh, event um, where the superintendent's office will make a presentation to the community at large um, to talk about some promising movement that the district has made. Usually these state of the district events can happen in very small groups. It can happen with, let's say, just the CEC, or it could happen yes. just with the school leadership. Yes. This is happening. We are really marketing strong that everyone in the community from legislators, parents, community-based organization, businesses that have come in uh, to our community, anybody to hear the good news. So, you know, bad news always travels quicker than yeah. good news. Well, we want this good news to travel really quickly. So we received a formal invitation from us um, by next week, but we really would like to see you there. It's going to be held at Frederick Douglass Academy 1 on um, Adam Clayton Power Boulevard and 151st Street. So please put that, pin that in your calendar and look, look forward <laughs> to seeing you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Johnson. Appreciate that. Yes, yes please send us. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh my gosh. Okay. I'm so excited. All right. <laughs> I know that we are getting pressed for time, so I will move on. Um, thank you again, however, team. Now, uh, we have three. Deirdre, are you saying? I can't hear you. 
Oh, I'm saying, yeah, we next we have Connor. Um, and yes, I was going to say, we just have three uh, presenters left. Uh, Connor, hit the books and artistic. Oh, of course, Lillian. So just to keep that in mind that we are winding down and we're going to it. Connor, I see you are the co-host. So feel free to unmute yourself, share your screen and tell us about uh, what Bank Street has been going on. Cool. Has going can you all hear me? Because now I can't see you anymore. Sure can. Okay, great. And can you see the, the presentation? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. I can jet through this because uh, I typically do this with uh, Liberty Leads' director, Ani Tiburcio. She had like a family emergency. Um, uh, everything's okay. Don't worry about that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I can I can kind of give you the um, nutshell. Because I think what happens is when we do it together, we both uh, make each other remember something and we end up going like twice as long as we intended to. Um, so I won't be as uh, long-winded this time, and nor will I be as devoted to this presentation. Um, okay, so for the uninitiated, Liberty Leads is an out-of-school time program that's hosted at uh, the Bank Street College of Education. Um, out-of-school time meaning uh, after schools, weekends, summer, uh, for the bulk of the summer, I think we kind of take off at the end of August to like retool programming for the, the upcoming year. Um to say it is uh, hosted at Bank Street is, I guess, a little bit of a misnomer because we share space with them, um, but we fundraising wise, we are kind of our own thing entirely. And it's kind of a best of both worlds scenario where we get to, um, we get the resources and like a kind of ed educational pedagogy we can siphon off from Bank Street. And at the same time, we, it being kind of a relatively small team, um, we are able to be much more mobile and uh, responsive to what's going on with our students and what's going on um, like in their personal and academic lives in a way that kind of if we had to maneuver the entire college, it would be, you know, uh, a very slow turning ship. So, uh, yeah, that's what's going on with us. Um, in general, I think the original idea of Liberty Leads was kind of to provide academic based um, programming to these students. So it was it it is um uh classes like you know classes similar to those one would take at school um it, uh, I, I think on the next slide i'll have more about it um but i think a thing we all kind of know and realize and things i uh, think we've kind of spoken around is uh there is kind of no you know making sure that the educational future of these kids is okay without making sure that they themselves are okay that their families are okay and so over the years, and especially, especially in response to COVID and then some of the kind of governments, uh, city, state, and national government wonkiness that have been going on over the past few years, a lot of Liberty Leads programming has grown organically to be more family involved or be more uh, ad hoc and in, in response to what is, you know, happening in their actual lived lives, whether that is, there's a lot of uh, translation services, there's a lot of helping with um, SNAP and TANF um, applications. There's a whole bunch of FAFSA and helping students out with um, the college ap application process and all of the kinds of ins and outs of that. Um, yeah, and that's and that's something that we uh, are able to, well, A, with, you know, funding from West Harlem and B, um, with the kind of mobility that comes with being a small smaller program, we're able to uh, be pay more attention to and be, be more vigilant about. Um, yeah, what's going on with this next slide? So this is just this is just kind of um, a summary of the types of students that are with, go with Liberty Leads. Um, yeah, one hundred percent of our students are eligible for free or reduced price meals. Um, Seventy percent come from households where English is not the main spoken language. Um, um, the bulk of our staff are bi or trilingual um, and are all uh, you know able to reach out and have kind of. Um, in like intimate relationships with these local families because the all of our staff lives in the area um the bulk of our students i have stats on this somewhere it's like a pretty shocking number of the amount of students that are either sons or daughters or cousins or siblings of uh of previous students the amounts of times i've met uh parents i oh i believe we there was i believe we maybe even gotten into grandchild territory um it's so it makes it a lot easier as time rolls on that these are people who know each other. And so it makes it a lot easier to keep tabs and make sure that they are getting the types of um, supports that they need. Yeah, so this is just kind of a summary of the type of in kind of in the school year programming that we have 
Um, it's a lot of academic enrichment stuff. And then the, to me, the, um, the thing that I like most about Liberty Leads or the thing that I am kind of most intrigued by is the summer programming because the summer over the summer, we are a lot, it's a lot less, um, we're kind of during the school year, there's a lot of a making sure that, you know, we are taking care of academic needs, but B that's when a lot of these, uh, other kind of crises moment come through, whether it's, you know, students getting suspended and us needing to advocate for them, which is, um, like student suspensions of we've noticed have been on, on a rise this past year. And I think a lot of that is in part to, uh, you know, understaffing and specifically guidance counselor understaffing. Um, and so a lot of our work during the year is kind of acting as a direct um, on our back foot, making sure we are responding to what's happening uh, in their lives. But over the summer, the stuff that I kind of love uh, is when we kind of are able to craft our own kind of pedagogy and be more, um, and build a thing with the students that they want to do. And it's not necessarily us just trying to make sure that their immediate needs are taken care of. Um, and that's the thing that's been gradually, that kind of got stymied pretty horribly by the pandemic. It was, all, we, we would do a lot of, uh, we would do a lot of traveling. We would do a lot of, you know, outside the school. We would do a lot of overnights at colleges. And uh, gradually a very cool thing is that over the last few summers, we've been able to uh, start to add, re-add a lot of this programming while also keeping some of the uh, ad hoc new crises programming that have um, that have come up as a result of the, the, the pandemic and, you know, local government stuff. Um, and so we are weirdly growing into, uh, we are, you know, having gone, you know, and in, in, if you were to talk to me in summer 2020, I'd be like, oh, this is kind of, uh, you know, 70% of Liberty Leads capacity, but we've now learned from what has happened and also are able to reapply kind of old pre-pandemic standards to grow into a, a kind of entirely new Liberty Leads that I'm very proud to work at. And so the big thing that happened this past summer is we were able to, I don't think we have a slide on it. Um, yeah, this is just some of the stuff I was talking about. The, uh, we were able to start running our um, like fully robust uh, student um college tours, which we had not been able to do in a few years. And so we had a whole bunch of West Harlem students. Uh, we, I have the list of colleges we went to here. And I think one of them even included it overnight. We went to, we had brought two students to Marist, SUNY New Paltz, Vassar, SUNY Albany, Syracuse, SUNY Onondaga, Cornell, SUNY Binghamton, and SUNY Delhi. And it was just cool um, to be able to provide these opportunities to students again. Um, and those sorts of I just think in general, what I like about Liberty Leads is the idea of making concrete a thing that like taking a thing that is maybe an abstract to students and making it very clear, like this could be your life. Very similar to, you know, what you all have been talking about before with students getting to talk at Columbia about about what it would be like to, you know, be a fencer there. It It is, you know, you don't realize how much that helps, how much being like the putting a student on a campus and being like, this is a life you are worthy and capable of living. And in fact, you're like closer to it than you realize. Um, it really means a lot. It really, it does a lot of work uh, in centering them towards a specific goal. And it just is very cool to get to be able to fully do that again, instead of just being like, uh, you know, in 2020, we like did Zooms with their, you know, with admissions officers or whatever. It's not quite the same. Um, yeah, so that's about it. I, I don't know. There's a uh, without Ani, there's like you know, um, not quite. I don't know if I would be able to answer any specific uh, like kind of programming based questions. But um, a a big part of why we like coming to these meetings is like we are totally. Um, uh, speaking of this slide, like we totally like collaborating either informally or formally, like a Zoom call to talk about what what's going on or or like you know, a more formal um, partnership uh, is really cool because every time I've come to the, one of these meetings, I've seen programs that are either really similar to us that I'm inspired by or programs that are wildly different from us that I'm inspired by. So um, yeah, so I'll put my information in the chat and we, if you want, if you have any specific questions, of course you can ask. And then you can also, I'll put mine in Ani's um, emails and you can reach out to us for sure. Um, and this is just a bunch of other nonsense um yeah so that's about it um yeah let me know what's up if you have any questions slide on me
Connor, you said you're so short. You were like, oh, I may not be able to do this. I mean, I've, you've been presenting to the community board for maybe three or four years now. We've been <laughs> seeing you. I've seen you through different haircuts and everything. I promise you, you <laughs> can answer probably any question that anyone has about Bank Street Liberty Leads. Uh, but I do want to open up the floor. Does anyone have any questions for Connor? I don't see any hands. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Uh, Connor, I will just say great presentation as usual. Thank you for continuing because I really love what you do when you work with the families. I think that's very important and it helps keep the kids in check. And I think it makes them feel a little bit more like connected to maybe the program. So I think that that's fantastic. Please keep up the good work. Yeah, really, thank you so much. Man, yeah, yeah. I think, and it's also good for the parents too, because, you know, we get busy kind of working and running, um, but it's really important to check in and take a moment to slow down and see what's going on with our kids. So that's a great thing. So please keep up the good work. Yeah, and I think it just breaks down some walls where it's like, yeah. talking to a teacher or a principal feels like a bit more formal whereas like yeah i've seen i've seen parents just text ani who's the director of this program who like has a lot to do and she just is able to be like oh ding ding like just having kind of a almost like a mini manager or something is like yeah. shockingly helpful to like for that sort of um you know translation and you know taking the load off of the parents for sure yes well but also i think everybody on this call can agree that parental engagement really is the key um, and so often we have to fight and pull teeth for parental engagement. So please keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you so much. Absolutely, Connor. All right. I know you'll be sending us a form to sign. I think you already sent it. So we'll get it back to you as soon as possible. And that goes for everybody else on the call, of course, as well. And I don't see any questions. So with that, I'm going to go to our next presenter. Um, how do I pronounce your first name? Is it Jihei? Okay. Tell me. It's just Jay. Jay? Oh, that's mm -hmm. easy. Okay. Okay. I thought I was. There's a long history of me and names on this uh, meeting. It's I, no I usually I've never intended. No, I usually tell people um, the rest of the letters are silent. They are merely there for balance. Um, I love that. Okay. <laughs> just the floor is yours. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I am going to share my screen if that's all right, really quickly. Um, I know that it is getting late and people are fading. All right. So my name is Jay Thompson. I'm the executive director of Hit the Books. I joined Hit the Books in August of 2023. Um, Hit the Books was founded in August of 2019. Um, Hit the Books is located in Harlem um, on 127th Street in St. Nicholas. And we serve students who are in the second through eighth grade through after school tutoring, mentoring, and mixed martial arts programming. So we leverage a sports-based development programming um, in order to provide academic and educational resource support for our students. So we use our mixed martial arts as a hook. We have a facility that is a little under 5,000 square feet. We roughly uh, serve on average about 125 students with a max capacity of 150 students. Uh, we run programming for 46 weeks out of the year. Um, in addition to after school, so we have programming Monday through Saturday. Um, and then we also have a five week summer program. We, um, let me see. So with our, our three pillars that we leverage, so we have our tutoring program where we support students with their academic growth. Uh, we also partner with Hollerum Renaissance High School who provide us with um, high performing high school students who serve as tutors. We also have a partnership with Columbia School of Social Work, where we have three uh, master's level social work students who come in and also work with our students. And then we also have our mixed martial arts program. So we have a director over each of our programs, our, ment our academic program and our mixed martial arts program. Um, both of those individuals are full time. Um, 
Each under them, they have four part-time staff that work with our students from 2 p.m. to roughly about 7.45, two days a week. Um, and then on the other three days a week, we have programming from 2 to about 6.15. Um, so our combination of academics and mixed martial arts, um, also coupled by mentorship, leads to our students having increased social emotional learning skills as well as increased academic skills. We leverage a program, um, iReady. So iReady, we leverage it for our diagnostic. Um, and then we also do a mid-year and an end of year in order for us to gather the data for our program. Um, and then we also leverage the iReady data in our academic programming in order for us to create individualized learning plans for students, as well as group learning activities based on where they are academically. So on this slide is just a little bit of our schedule. We open at two. Um, and then we end our programming roughly at about 6.15. We expanded our programming for our seventh and eighth graders. So on Mondays and Tuesdays, we're here till about 7.45, where we have programming um, for all of our cohorts of students. So we have our second and third graders is a core uh, cohort, our fourth, fifth, and sixth graders is a co cohort, and then our seventh and eighth graders are a cohort. And then these are just some pictures of our students um, in various activities throughout the year. So with regard to mixed martial arts, most of our students focus on um, drilling versus uh, sparring. So we have uh, a mixed martial arts gym that I'm, that you can kind of see in the background of this picture. And most of our students will spar on heavy bags um, until they... Uh, increase in rank, and then they do light sparring with partners. And that is our programming. Excellent work. Thank you. That looks like fun. <laughs> it definitely is. So we do have um, individuals who will come in and tour our facility. And if you're here and you are dressed appropriately, you are more than welcome to jump into one of our classes. We will That's have awesome. one of our older students show you the ropes, so to speak. That's so cool. Beautiful. All right, Deirdre, we're going to go down there. I see Lydia's hand. <laughs> yes. No, I just, you know, it's trying to be silly, but... I, the idea of calling something hit the books, I guess it didn't turn the kids off. Not at all. The, the <laughs> irony of that is we get we get calls every day. Do you take book donations? Like that's what we oh. people call us at least once a week asking if we take book donations. Wait, do you? It depends. It depends. Okay. <laughs> we want to make so sure that uh, the the books are you know, um, culturally relevant, age appropriate for our students. Yeah. Not just so, the book you show, huh? <laughs> I was gonna say, I didn't hear you mention cost too much, Jay. Um, what is the cost like, <laughs> Connor? There is no cost. I apologize. I, I probably should have let you that. You We're 501c3. There is no cost associated. You that there was like, uh, you know, some free classes, but I didn't think that was across the board. It is 100% wow. uh, across the board. Um, the average cost Fantastic. for a student to participate for a full year, the full 46 weeks, is $5,000. Okay. All right, but nobody has to pay anything. You're able to get grants and everything. That's fantastic. Great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we have um, generous donors that support the work that we do. Um, we haven't even gotten into government grants just yet. Um, and I'm excited because this will be our first year that we'll actually have a, a gala. So that's oh, how that's we great. find it. That's yeah. great. That's Thank like you. the, uh, that's the cornerstone of the 501c3 is like, okay, it's time. That's <laughs> the jam. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> excited. Right. So next fall sometime. All right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Keep us in the loop. That's wonderful news. Yes. All right. I want to make sure, do I see any hands uh, for Jay at all for Hit the Books? Connor had a funny comment in the chat. I don't know if you saw it, Jay, about donate books if you promise not to hit them. 
Thank you, Connor, for that. Thank you. <laughs> keeping keeping it light for us. It's getting late in the evening, but we are wrapping up. So without any pause, I'm just looking through the list. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And nice to meet you and hope to see you back again soon. And uh, Lillian, you've been waiting patiently. I think you were one of the first people on the meeting. Uh, you've been waiting patiently. Yeah. I truly appreciate it. Uh, so feel free to, yes, it's the floor Thank is yours. You. Thank you. I do want to share if I can be made co-host or be able to share screen. Anika, can you do that for me? I'm unable to change anything. Hopefully I didn't do anything crazy. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm on. Oh, good, because I couldn't do it. Okay. <laughs> Everybody looking at the Artistic Dreams logo. We are. Great. Okay, without further ado, I'm going to continue. So I'm going to do it as fast as possible. Um, so I am the executive director and founder of Artistic Dreams International, and we went, we were founded in 2011, working in West, West Harlem since then. Uh, we nurture students 5 to 18, so uh, kindergarten through high school, to become creative world citizens who can transform their lives and their communities through the arts. And right now, part of our mission is to, to get our kids to become culturally aware, to always have always since 2011 learned to think outside the box. And now we're very, very focused on getting them to appreciate their own heritage Dream big as usual and create a better world as global citizens. And our saying is create the world because why, why not? <sighs> as I said, we've been around since 2011 and our programs are free for students. We offer weekly workshops mostly uh, throughout Harlem in New York public schools. And this year alone, we will offer 178 to 200 workshops in our uh, West Harlem schools. We celebrated our 10th anniversary in, in 2021, so we're going on to 13 years. And we also serve New York public library locations on Saturdays. We hold programs in Mexico, and we have had them in other countries, such as Morocco, in the last three, four years. Uh, we've served over 6,000 students since 2011. We do that so continuously. We focus more, our approach is more, get into a school and stay there forever. <laughs> as opposed to touch many schools by one workshop. We just like to get into school and just stay there uh, to nurture our students. Uh, we've uh, offered the service to over 3,000 students in West Harlem. And in general, we offer more than 435 hours of free programming per year, always free for the student. There are main areas, which is this is the most important part of the whole presentation, I would say, is uh, the arts are always at the core. We focus on the visual arts, but also have done in a very uh, wonderful way through our amazing teaching artists. We've done chorus, theater, writing, storytelling, movement and yoga, and technology, everything within the arts. Uh, our focus is in the visual arts, and we are really proud to have opened up, launched a wonderful program called Art and Mindfulness at the end of the pandemic, because we were getting asked for that over and over from um, school directives. Uh, the students obviously very much needed it. So we were very successful in joining um, PS46 and the Police Athletic League, who, who is now our partner, to implement the mindfulness program successfully. And it ran for a whole year for all um, 20, since 2021. So uh, it's been wonderful. And we're continuing with that program in schools this year and in West Harlem as well. We have um, done for many years now, Art and Empowerment, which focuses on students creating a vision and mission for their life. And it's very much a leadership program, all coupled up with the arts. And our approach is uh, to go in and get kids to, to have class and discussion with their teachers, mostly guided by the student and looking at through VTS, which is virtual thinking strategies, looking at art from all over the world and from all walks of life and starting a conversation. That's how we start. And it's always really, if it's related to leadership, we might be looking at Martin Luther King, do you know, we might be looking at Nelson Mandela and we go from there. Um, and then after that, kids will have 45 minutes if possible, if not more up to an hour uh, or an hour and a half of full work time. It just depends on, on our location, full art, artwork time. 
in practice. We also have arts and world awareness, which is where kids look at the United Nations development goals and learn about the problems in our world and how to solve them. And so solutions come up through through the children themselves. And, uh, and we look at different um, um, examples of students throughout the world who have changed the world and have changed a specific issue significant, significantly. We do art and world cultures, which we have done since the beginning. It's really where we, we we're very popular with this curriculum because, because one, kids love it. They love to learn about world culture, but this is where we're now emphasizing their own culture. Uh, we're looking at our own um, demographic, our own cohort, where we come from, teachers, students, and really focusing on, on students to appreciate where they come from. I mean, even their food, their music, their religion, what they believe um, to be able to become adults who are proud of who we are, right? We offer all our classes in um, English, second language, or, or Spanish. So we offer English, Spanish, or mixed. It's really funny because you may go into one of our classes and it's just the both languages all the time. And, and now with the influx of migrants, this is, this is the norm. Okay, so I'm gonna go on. So what we offer on-site classes, summer programs as well in, in partnership with our schools and we do our, also, since the pandemic, virtual live arts classes and also virtual exchange programs with countries around the world. The skills that a student learns is from cultural awareness to cultural self-awareness and other, other very important skills that you're reading on the screen. And we focus on nurturing respect, leadership, integrity. These are things that kids don't learn in school. They usually learn at home but we like to bring this into our program. It's very important. And for them to be proud of who they are, we need to, to, to get into these topics as well. Our, we're very proud of our teaching artists. They're usually visionaries, innovators, collaborators. They need to be because they're gonna be the, the students' mentors. So we look for people that have these traits. If you know of anyone who is a visual artist or any type of artist who is a teaching artist and would like to work with us, please let me know. Always looking for them. Uh, we believe in measuring growth mindset. We believe that anyone can do anything. We are artistic dreams, so we always are encouraging our children to think big and think out of the box. So we measure growth mindset. Throughout the years, we started measuring this in 2016. And as you can see, growth mindset in our students have grows, usually grows in a, a, in a very impactful way. And we measure this with assessments, obviously. Uh, our locations, these, you can see some of our, the nice faces of our great students. We're at PS 36, we're at PS 210. We've been at PS 129, we are at PS 161. And it, it goes on, on, on and off. It just depends on the needs of, of uh, uh, school administrators at the specific year. And we, we go in the school, out of school, it depends on funding as well. But we're usually always at these schools. We're also at um, Hamilton Grange Library, George Bruce Library, PS 125, and PS 153. Sure, our locations in West Harlem. We've also been in other schools. Um, we've been um, this is other parts of Harlem for many, many years, and we also do work with Columbia Secondary and Teachers College, College Community School. Our main funders. We're very proud of our work thus far because we got a great NISCA grant of 100K. You know, this is our first, this is our biggest grant ever. So we got, thank you, yes. Uh, we feel so proud of all our hard work from NISCA. We couldn't believe it. It's over two years, but who cares, right? It's like, wow. <laughs> so uh, this is the first year. It took 13 years to get here. Um, uh, obviously, West Harlem Development Corporation was our first grant ever. So we're, our work is possible because of West Harlem Development Corporation. And you see other funders there. And our great partners are Harlem Dowling Center, West Side Center for Children and Family Services. We've, we've had about four years now working with them. We work wherever they are located, we're located as well because we have such a great communication and friendship. Uh, so we're very happy about that. Uh, New York Public Library since 2011. Uh, now our newest one is Police Athletic League. 
which we hope to increase in the, in the, to broaden, and obviously the Department of Education, and we do our summer programs through the Department of Youth and Community Development. These are just some great pictures of our kids that you can see and the artwork, their diplomas after they are, they've been um, making artwork for a whole year. This is one of the last latest murals. We do murals too. So we, we did this mural at PS36. This is the latest one. And it's most of the work is done by the students themselves. So we're really proud of that. And that's it for me. <laughs> that's it. Congratulations Thanks. on the grant. Uh, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. very welcome. <laughs> If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. If not, happy to say goodnight as well. <laughs> All right, Lily, if you stop, well, when you can stop sharing your screen, please, and I can see the people hands a little bit better. I'm looking Andrew, for the stop share button. Oh, okay. I need glasses. There. Oh. Okay. Oh, wow. I can see again. <laughs> any questions? From anyone? We just want to say thank you, um, as Shanika just said, Lily and this is great, great, absolutely. Yeah, I like what you said about the uh, increase in the growth mindset. And you said you use assessments. I don't want to keep everyone for a long time, but uh, we can always talk offline. I would love to know more about that because I think that that's so fantastic. Being yeah. able to think outside the box, I think at least a little bit of a happier life. Uh, if you're always very rigid about what should be happening, it can be very depressing. So that growth mindset is great. That's real. I would. I would. I'll reach out to you. Of course, uh, I'm happy to share. Okay. Our <laughs> so happy to share, of course. All right, awesome, awesome. Thank you. All right. I don't want to keep the teams, but I just want to make sure there's no additional questions. Okay. I want to tell everyone, thank you so much uh, for your patience and for presenting. And and I, I, I think I speak on behalf of Deidre, of course. I don't want to speak for you, uh, but I, I will speak for myself that this is such important work that you all are doing. It benefits us in a myriad of ways. So please continue your good work and thank you very much. Uh, and keep us in the loop with anything else that's happening. Uh, Deirdre, please, of course, the floor is yours. Absolutely, we share the same sentiments. And if there's any way we can support you, please let us know. We'll be happy to do anything that we can to um, continue the partnership and get the word out, as Janika would say. Thank you very much. So if I can just ask if, um, as we end our community presentations, um, if the YEL team can just remain on Zoom so we can just do a little committee update. Thank you. Have a wonderful week, all, and bye bye. Thank you so much for your great works. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all of you. Absolutely, Alyssa, we'll stop recording in a minute. Uh, and maybe not because we're at a committee. Let me just get everyone else off. Hi. This is a great turnout this evening. Nice to see everybody. Fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Hi, Sharon. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Sharon. Us. Nice to see Tiago. That's great. Like I'm very happy. Nice to see everyone. Um, great you. meeting tonight. Very, very full. Very robust. <laughs> yeah, great. So, <laughs> just a quick update. Um, from Miss Uther. Um, as chair, we do have discretionary funding. I'm not quite sure yet what um, what's available to us, but I know that we are planning to do a YEL Spring Forum and. The discretionary fund is available and Ms. Uther is asking us to create a proposal. So I just wanted to um, ask with Shanika and our all of us that maybe we may have to meet via email and have an, one offline meeting, you know, mm -hmm. not in the community, community presentations because we don't get a lot of time to follow up to kind of really, really um, get our uh, spring or our 